Hi, this is Sabin Bharti and we are here at OpenSUSE conference in Nuremberg, Germany. And today we have with us Cynthia Sanchez, your creator of EOS. First of all, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Well, it's my <laughs> pleasure. What is EOS? EOS is an open source design system. Um, it was initially created with the goal of improving our processes within SUSE. But then we actually found out that there's so, there's so much value in it that we wanted to make it open source. A design system is basically um, the modern solution to scaling design. So when, when you have many products, so the, your products portfolio in your company is big, and uh, so inconsistency starts growing. That, that's, like, it, that's what is going to happen. The companies when, with growing portfolios, uh, they tend to, you know, grow inconsistently in terms of UI and UX. Um, and why that happens is normally because they don't have processes in place, they don't have standards in place. So there were many different ways in which uh, in the past we tried to solve those problems in the industry, in open source, in enterprise, everywhere. And the today's solution is design systems. And design systems, what they do is they centralize uh, the uh, design and UX effort so everything goes into one uh, repository, so to so say, and from there, all the effort is built, you know, in a very um, unified place, and from there, then it is also consumed by all the other products. All the products that you have in your portfolio are going to consume the end results. So basically, you test once, you create components once, you created the, gui the guidance of uh, how to use those components, UI elements and everything else, templates and whatnot. And, and then, then it is distributed in all of the products and it is um, implemented in a more consistent way. What are the core components of, you know, design system? Because I, I, I just want to understand what, what exactly is it? Is it the look and feel of the, whether the sites or the icons or... Can you just explain that? What exactly are we? You understand what I'm asking? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of people tend to um, misunderstand the concept of design system just because it has the word design in it. Uh, it's a lot more than that. So, it's um, like you said before, it touches the look and feel a lot, but it's not just about that. It's also about um, consistent front end uh, development as well. Because if, you, if I can put you in an example, for instance, if you have product A is developing a login page, and you have product B also developing a, product, a, a login page, why shouldn't they just you know, collaborate and use the same code? So normally that doesn't happen. If you don't have a standards or if you don't have a design system in place, what will happen is that the developers in product A, they're going to develop their own uh, login page, even if, it, even if the design is the same for both. And then product B is going to develop it the same way. Uh, normally, they're not going to behave the same way because developers code in a different way. They, they made a responsive design in a different way too. So with a design system, you're also solving the part that everything is also developed previously before you actually use it, implement it in your product. So that login page is made once, and it's, it's developed once, and then it's used by the developers. I mean, just basically like a copy paste, if you may say. Uh, so much, much faster. So you also, it's, it also saves time and money to the development teams. But then the last part, and to me the most important thing is the user experience is, um, is aligned. So you have the look and feel, you have the front end part, but then you have the user experience part. And it's how we communicate, how we use our components, how we uh, give experiences to our users in a more unified way. That is the main, main, main goal. That's like, that's how we actually solving the problem to the customer. When you have a big portfolio, like OpenSUSE has, or you know many other companies do, um, what normally happens is that you use one product and you use, uh, then you fall in love with the company and then you start using many other products for your uh, purposes. And when you have the same experience in all of the products that you're using, then, it, then the learning curve you know, tends to decline a little bit and the experience of the consumer is much better because they know what, how to do things. Even if you know, you're using a tool for, I don't know, 
to deploy servers and another tool that is just to uh, it's just a desktop, for example, just to, even to play a video, video game. You still want to close uh, panels the same way. You still want to get alerts the same way because it's, it's how you expect things to happen, right? So, yeah, that, that's what the, the main goal of the design system is, is to unify the experience and to provide better experiences to our consumers. Yeah, so if you, if you compare with the real world, you know, mm -hmm. uh, 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 I mean, if you look at chair, yes. it, they all look same, you know, door, you know, you know how to use it, you know, yes. just, it doesn't matter whether that good door goes to a lobby or, uh, exactly. you know, so, so it's just like, uh, does it also help with the uh, uh, kind of eliminating duplication of work yes. and cons cons conserve resources? Because as you mentioned, you know, different developers are doing their own different, you gave example login, but there are so many things. So there are just five teams are doing the same thing in different ways, a basis of resources. Exactly. Does it also help with that? Yeah, exactly. So there's a lot of inconsistency, inconsistency in duplication. So uh, developers tend to, oh, not just developers, sorry, because I, it's not like I'm attacking developers. I'm also a developer myself. Um, so you can blame your community, that's what we find. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also designers, um, it is a very, very, very frequently designers also design uh, an interface and even in the same product, they have to design something different, I mean a new feature for the same product and they tend to improve their previous design and they don't realize that actually they, they, they just deliver in different experiences different components, they're, they're just changing everything on the on the way. Uh, so yeah, we actually help eliminating that duplication, like you said before. But also I wanted to get to something else you said, uh, the real world experience. When you go to an airport you and you're looking for the toilet, you always look up and you're looking for, you know, the banners up there. And if suddenly you go to a different airport because you, you've traveled a lot and you, you see that, you, you have a pattern. Then you, different, you suddenly go to a different airport in a different continent, perhaps, that they're used to doing things a different way. I'm 90% 90 per, 90 sure that you're going to get lost and you're not yes. going to find a toilet. So the same thing happens in, in, in uh, web interfaces or software in general. You, you know, so you use software from other communities, from other uh, companies, and you find patterns and you expect to find the same patterns when you create something new. So that's what we actually have to pay very close attention to. We talked about the problem that you're so trying to solve. When when did you start this project and what was the driver? What, what triggered you to, hey, I have to do that? Uh, when did I start it? I mean, the, when did I start pushing for it? That's a different question maybe, but uh, officially started like two years ago. But I, I began with this four years ago, actually, on my own. Um, because we, did, we didn't have the resources, we didn't have the time to do it. So I just went for it in my free time and started you know, slowly um, thinking about the project, how to make it grow within the company and all that. Yeah, we didn't have the resources, so basically I started by myself in my free time. I started you know, implementing, trying to see how, how to improve our processes, how to fix the inconsistency that we were growing. Every day was inconsistency growing. And... Um, well, I mean, I think that suddenly the company started paying attention and seeing... I think that actually the problem was always there. Everyone saw it, but no one knew how to exactly fix it. Uh, we started with something small. I started with something small that was like um, just some implementation guidelines, basically, for, for, uh, the temp for the general template that we had. And then we started to see that actually this was working because it was helping not just the current uh, products that we had in the company, but also the new products. Um, you know, in open source, you always have people with self-initiative that they always create new products and all that. And to them, it was really valuable because they could see they, they had a starting point that they didn't have before. And yeah, with, from there, I think we actually saw that there was a, a huge advantage of having something like this. And then the next step was making it open source. We realized that actually there are many open source design system, systems, but there are not so many of them that are customizable and that is our added value. So um, EOS is uh, one of the first uh, open source and customizable design systems, which means that you know if you actually use EOS, we don't have to, we're not pushing for you to follow our guidelines but actually for you to create your own. Because one of the main things about design systems 
is that you, you are a company or you are an open source project, whatever you are, you have an identity. And then you want the identity to be transmitted in your products. So for example, if you're in a startup, then most likely you want to transmit that you are young and that you are, um, you know, uh, you, you, you want to get uh, the community to work with you and you want to possibly be funny about your uh, mistakes and all that. So you can say things like, oops, this page is not working anymore. But then suddenly if you are a company that is more uh, mature, more enterprise, then you're not going to be making jokes. So you're going to take your audience more seriously. Um, so that's one of the things that you actually want to do in, uh, in a design system. You want to improve the visibility of your brand and the, um, the perception that your brand is, take, is, is, is receiving you know, from, from your audience. What is the situation right now? Uh, is it still a project? Have you created a company around it? How are you funding and supporting it? Um, how we founded it? Uh, I think that's a hard question to answer right now. I think, um, well, SUSE is helping us a lot. It is official. It's an official project uh, or product in the company. It's not something that we sell, obviously, so it's not it's not part of our product portfolio, but it's internally um, the, the official design system of SUSE. And it is also in the way of becoming the official design system of OpenSUSE. Um, well, I mean, if you go to the OpenSUSE website, you already see it there. But the current state of the OpenSUSE design system is that we are you know, trying to gather more uh, collaborators, so more people to actually help us grow the, the open source design system. Um, but yeah, in terms of foundings, I think uh, I think we are there. I think we are slowly growing and grabbing more attention uh, from yeah, well, other uh, organizations that want to you know help us grow. Uh, what is the story of the name EOS? EOS, where did they get the name from? Okay, that's a funny one actually. Um, there's not so much uh, meaning behind it. <laughs> so when I started with this, I just needed a repository because I needed to start somewhere. So I said to my uh, my colleagues, I said, look, I just need a repository because I just need to start somewhere. I just I just need a name. And we said, well, we, we tried to brainstorm with some names and actually we didn't come to an agreement. So we just ran uh, a randomizer, <laughs> uh, call names randomizer. And it gave us a couple of options, and well, the one that we liked the most was EOS. Oh, I thought and it was something to do with MT, you know, yeah, open. No. <laughs> <laughs> MT open no source. No at all. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone always comes and asks, so what kind of operating system is this? Exactly. It's not an operating system. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, actually, we said this is going to be temporal, mm -hmm. and then we made a, a logo, mm -hmm. and then we actually fell in love with the name and mm -hmm. with the logo, so now we are EOS. Okay, you created this project. I'm, I'm pretty sure that you're fully passionate about it and you're doing a lot of work. Uh, but I, I, I'm also sure that you also try to find some free time. What do you do in the free time? What are your hobbies? My hobbies? Uh, well, I'm a gamer. Gamer? So I, yeah, yes. What I, kind of games do you play? I think, I'm, I don't know. Uh, right now, if you ask me, I'm playing more virtual reality uh -huh. uh, with PlayStation. Um, this one is called uh, Beats, uh, what's it called? Beats, okay, I'm not going to remember right now, but basically you just play music. Mm -hmm. You just have to slash some uh, some blocks that are coming to you. Uh -huh. So virtual reality, I'm really into it right now. It's just getting much better. It's, uh, I played the first video games that uh, came out in virtual reality, and I couldn't play more than two minutes because I will get you know all the motion sickness. Mm -hmm. But now it's it was really better. bad. Yeah, I, I just I ordered the Galaxy Quest. Yeah, it's, it's arrived there, but I'm here, so I could not play with that. And I'm also heavily into gaming. I have PlayStation 4. Uh, uh, I have uh, Samsung VR. I'm heavily into VR, but I also play uh, open world games. Okay. You know, like Assassin's Creed. Or I, I like a game where you know, uh, it's not you know just you no know, uh, first-person shooter where you have a mission. You just run through the doors and yes. very. Uh, I like open world game where you know I can go to places. I can finish one mission and come back and do different things. Uh, Zero Dawn Horizon is one of my favorite games that, that I play. Good. Yeah, yeah. That one is good. And I'm also into 3D paintings. Uh, uh, so I have a fully open source 3D printer from uh, Czech Republic. Uh, so I also print all those sawtooth and all those animals from this game. I have the Zelda sword that I printed full size. <laughs> so and I'm looking forward to uh, to my uh, Oculus, you know, quest. So because that is basically you know for yes. for gaming. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Cynthia, thank for you. talking to me today. And uh, 
I will keep an eye on the project and uh, whenever we get opportunity, we'll talk again just to get an update on what's going on with the project. Yeah, hopefully so. I'm going to see you again in the next conference. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you.